Hello there. My name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And that's really an extra special hello there today because in this video I'm going to be making some art inspired by General Kenobi himself since the new Obi-Wan series is coming out soon. At the time of recording this, May the 4th is right around the corner and then the series comes out a few weeks after that so it's a good time to take on a Star Wars project. Uh, but I haven't actually seen the show yet obviously so for this piece I'm just going to have some fun reimagining Obi-Wan Kenobi on Tatooine uh, but in the style of a Legend of Zelda game. Primarily a Link to the Past and Link's Awakening, um, which are the two stylistic references that I'll have throughout. For the sprite design here, I was actually trying to strike a balance between those Super Nintendo and Game Boy styles by selecting a sprite size in between the two, and then created the design using a limited palette of four grayscale tones. To colorize the sprite, I'm doing one of my favorite things and painting in the colors over top of the grayscale sprite. And this layer that I'm painting on is set to the color blending mode. And this makes it so that the colors that I paint over top will take on the value of the grayscale layer underneath. So it's a really great way just to maintain whatever simple contrast you might have established in grayscale and basically have that influence the colorized version. This one came out a little bit drab, which I thought actually might kind of work for the setting here but I continued to play around and make a few tweaks and I eventually found something more saturated, um, which is also more in line with the vibrant look of the Zelda games. Now, one of the things I wanna do right off the bat is to establish a walking animation. And I'm gonna start making that stepping pose here by lowering the head by one pixel and moving one of the hands up front to lead the pose. The other hand will need to be tucked back then and I've also reduced the size of it from four pixels to two pixels so that it kind of shrinks or hides away uh, from being brought behind the body. For the foot stepping forward, I'm actually gonna bump it up and then put an outline under it. And that should work for it stepping up in this perspective of the character. What's nice about this sprite workup is that we can actually just mirror the sprite to create the opposite step. And in this case, I've just made sure that the angle of the poncho and the folds and all that stay consistent. But then by putting those together between the original standing pose, we end up with this simple four frame walk cycle. At this point, I didn't know exactly what the final animated mock-up was going to contain, but I figured that I should at least prepare a walking animation in four directions since I'd at least have the character moving around the screen no matter what I was going to do. So for the side facing sprite here, I've got it set next to the original downward facing one and I'm trying to translate those same features and pretty much keep them at uh, kind of the same relative positions too. Then for the walk animation, I've carried out those same series of movements uh, just as seen from the side instead. And once again, what's nice here is that this actually takes care of both the right and the left facing sprites uh, since they can just work as mirror images of each other. In a similar manner, the upward facing sprite is actually sort of just a copy of the downward facing one. Um, in fact, it's literally a copy. I've just taken that existing sprite silhouette and recolored it so that we're viewing it from behind. So with just these little sprite efficiencies, we've now got those four directions of movement ready to go for later. All right, now we're gonna move into some environment design. And for this mock-up, I'm gonna use a canvas size of 200 by 184 pixels. Now it seems kind of odd, but the reason that I chose this size was because it's between that of the Super Nintendo and Game Boy resolutions. And also it's in a multiple of eight. And that's really important because I was trying within reason to design with respect to an eight by eight tile grid, just for a bit of added authenticity of the way that these games are structured. Now, one of the interesting things about the top-down perspective in the Legend of Zelda games is that we get this view of all four walls of the room from above. Now a lot of top-down pixel art games will often just show the far wall only, but what's going on here is that there are these 45 degree angle connections at the corners, and this creates this very sharp perspective that allows that tile pattern of the wall to kind of carry all the way around the room. And this works really well for being able to spot doorways and connections around the room and things like that. And so one of the things that I did that plays with this depth and perspective is to build up this raised platform within the room, a high ground, if you will, um, kind of just within the home that it sort of creates this like sunken living room kind of arrangement. I connected these two pieces with a small two tile wide staircase, and that worked reasonably well to fit the two levels together. And then continuing on here, the other thing that we'll see with the perspective here 
um, at least in the style of uh, A Link to the Past, is that the doorways have this sort of angled foreshortening to them. And it blends actually really well with the stylized look of those corners of the room. So I built this one using line segments that were three or four pixels tall per segment. Um, this one had me thinking that I should revise the stairs to include more of a top-down look like this. So we can see here uh, kind of a quick before and after with adding some of that front perspective to the staircase. Um, I think it honestly kind of works both ways actually, but it'll make more sense once the room starts to fill out with items that are primarily in that top-down perspective that the stairs could work as that as well. So as you may have already recognized, I'm making this house design based on Ben Kenobi's hut from episode four. Um, you know, the new series uh, hasn't aired yet and I'm not even sure how the timeline's gonna play out as far as like when he takes up residence here, but it does feel like something that they could wanna go into at some point. And at the very least, it'll be fun to have something for this mock-up that's kind of recognizable as our starter RPG home for this. For the decoration here, I've taken inspiration from that original movie as well. And then the other amazing reference that I found was this uh, cross-section artwork too. Uh, I was trying to trace the proper credit for this image and it was just this circular rabbit hole of like Pinterest reposts and stuff. But from what I can tell, this uh, potentially originates from a book called Star Wars Complete Locations, um, which does indeed appear to be a collection of cross-section artwork. So hopefully that's correct. Um, I'd certainly want to take a look either way. I love these sort of diagrams that give this complete view of these familiar locations like this. So a lot of these are translations of items from those references that I've built using these limited gray tones. But then uh, because this is Zelda influenced as well, I decided to throw in a few pots in the corner, um, which actually fit in really well with the decor here. To set this up for the color, what I had done was to place all the objects onto their own layer, uh, separate from the structural design of the room itself. Uh, my plan was to use slightly different colors uh, on the items than the background, just so that they popped a little bit more against that foundation. So for the object layer, I'm coloring it simply from that palette that was established when making the Obi-Wan sprite. Uh, so that's kind of easy enough. And then to finish things up uh, for the background, I'm again just doing a bit of exploration using the color blending mode to find something that's a little bit more of a cold or a neutral appearance. All right, for the next phase of the mock-up, I'm gonna do some environmental work for the area outside the home. Um, once again, this is on the same canvas size. Uh, in fact, it's still the same file <laughs> also. Um, what we're gonna do with the animation eventually is have him walk from inside to outside the house. Uh, but don't worry, it'll be a little more exciting than it sounds, uh, hopefully. For now, I'm getting the foundation ready for the tiling and various set pieces here. And one of the things that I wanted to do was to stage the position of the home just like the way that it is in the starting home from A Link to the Past, uh, where there's sort of that slight elevation and cliff tiling around it. Um, sort of a high ground position, if you will, again. But also, uh, this works really well just for embodying the look of tattooing too, because uh, we do see rocky cliffs in certain areas, so it seems like a fitting translation to make. So as you can see, I worked out some repeated tiling using the 8x8 grid, and then using a similar logic as for the interior of the home, I've carried that tiling around the cliff wall here as well. Overall, I had a lot of fun on this particular phase of the project because there were these larger set pieces to design. And these felt like some of the things that were some more recognizable Star Wars-y elements, you know? Uh, like just with how familiar and iconic the Tatooine homesteads are. So it was neat to kind of play that against the Legend of Zelda style and just see where things would fall. Uh, once again, I'm still just using a few gray tones to make all the initial design and shading logic. And well, in this case, I've also got the sandy color as my light tone there. I actually think something really simplistic like this limited set of tones here would be its own cool look, um, especially for a desert setting, uh, or like if I had leaned harder into the Game Boy vibe maybe. But eventually I began to add more color and just kind of explore that full appearance. And I started that by laying a tiled pattern for the sand here. And that one's built from a unit size of 16 by 16. Um, from there, I subbed in some colors from the existing palette and then just made a few other tweaks to find a nice balance and warmth to it. The last part of the outdoor build is going to be to place a few enemies, of course. So I'm going to create a Womp Rat and a Tusken Raider. 
Uh, again, you know, this isn't referencing anything about the series itself or my hopes for the series. Um, like, it's not as if I'm expecting to see Obi-Wan cutting down Womp Rats and Tusken Raiders left and right. Um, but in the gamification of this sort of locale, it feels like the right way to go, you know? And I was also curious just to recreate these designs in this style. Uh, interestingly, I found along the way, uh, or rather I should say I didn't find, uh, there was no like commonly used Womp Rat reference design. So I've kind of thrown my own into the mix here uh, with what I've done, along with, you know, a little bit of influence from the Legend of Zelda creatures. Okay, and we're moving back inside the house because I'm going to set up for the animation soon. Um, but first I'm designing a quick HUD, which is inspired by the one from A Link to the Past, um, which at this point seemed to be the front runner for stylistic influence. Uh, for the icons, the credits substituted really well for the rupees and the thermal detonator as the bomb, um, but I couldn't really settle on a common projectile to use instead of an arrow. So uh, I just kind of used it as a wildcard slot and I added a Bacta item, which obviously is nowhere near being a one-for-one -one substitution, but I just really love the look and the lore of an item like that. Um, so feel free to drop a comment of what items you'd want to have in a game like this. Now for the animation, the biggest hurdle is really just going to be the raw amount of work to kind of hand animate some simulated gameplay, um, even if that is just the character walking around a room. Uh, what I've done is organize the poses into a single layer folder, and so I can just move that entire folder around the room, and then when I want to change the pose, I can select a different one from the layers within the folder. Um, as we can see, my first attempt at the walk cycle came out a little bit choppy, so what I did was I doubled up the frame count within that same overall duration, but I kept the poses uh, at the same frequency. So now the sprite actually moves, like translates across the screen in smoother subunits, but the poses of the walk still trigger at the same rate as they did before. We'll see some other animation as well, but I've kind of saved all of that for the big reveal right now. So first, it's going to play my typical like animated recap type of thing. And then from there, it's going to go straight into the final animation. So let's go ahead and take a look at The Legend of Kenobi. The Legend of Leia? I don't know. The Legend of Kenobi, A Link to the Force. Here we go. All right, and there we have it. Um, as you can tell, you know, a lot of other individual animations added to the sequence as well, but everything is kind of working on that same principle of being isolated into their own folders and then just triggering on the right frame. I think my favorite sprites have to be the particle effect kind of ones, uh, like for the pot breaking or when defeating the Womp Rat. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead now and close out with some CRT time. So thank you for watching and take care and keep it square. And may the force be with you.